Welcome to the KDF Friday Bulletin. I am Sergeant Doreen Kedubu. The Bulletin is a show to keep you updated on events undertaken by the Ministry of Defence over the week. In our highlights tonight... Commander-in-Chief breaks ground for construction of Talanta Sports City. Kenya and Ethiopia enhance military relations. Cabinet Secretary for Defence commissions new dormitory at Moy Forces Academy. Deputy Commander Kenya Navy flags off Exercise Vitegeme 25. Exercise Justified Accord 2024 kicks off at Nanyuki. To start us off, His Excellency Dr. William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces today broke ground for the construction of the Talanta Sports City at Jamuhuri Grounds here in Nairobi. This is a major step in enhancing Kenya's readiness for the African Cup of Nation Finals, which it shall co-host alongside Tanzania and Uganda under the Pamoja East Africa banner. The ambitious project shall be supervised by the Ministry of Defense to ensure it is done with military precision, cost effectiveness and meets internationally set standards. In his remarks, the head of state said the government is keen to make Kenya a sporting country and monetize all sporting disciplines to create lucrative opportunities for the youth. I am very, very delighted to be here with you as we break ground for the construction of this historic Alanda Sports City, a transformative project that is designed to redefine our nation's sporting profile and deliver an iconic facility and infrastructural development for this city and for our nation. He expressed his appreciation for the ongoing refurbishment works being done at Mo International Sports Center, Kasarani, saying its timeline have been reviewed to be complete by the end of the year. Cabinet Secretary for Defense, Honorable Adan Duale, said it is the undertaking of the Ministry of Defense to work closely with the Ministry of Youth Affairs creative economy and sports to ensure the construction of the stadium to requisite standards is achieved. The groundbreaking comes a few days after Honorable Adan Duale and his counterpart Honorable Babu Namwamba met at Defence Headquarters to discuss the status of the infrastructure projects. Chief of General Staff of the Defence Forces of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, His Excellency Field Marshal Birhanu Jula, paid a visit to the Chief of the Defence Forces, General Francis Ogola, at the Defence Headquarters here in Nairobi. His Excellency Field Marshal Jula inspected a half guard of honour mounted by the Kenya Air Force and later proceeded for a closed-door meeting with the Chief of the Defence Forces in the company of a delegation of generals and senior officers from both militaries. Both General Ogola and Field Marshal Jula expressed their commitment to fostering closer military ties and working together to address common security threats facing the region. Here are more details on the story. The meeting held at the Defence Headquarters focused on enhancing the rich cordial military and bilateral relations between the two countries. The key deliberation made included Kenya's and Ethiopia's commitment to the regional peace and security, securing common border to counter threats such as contraband trade, drug and human trafficking. Other areas of interest in the meeting included a commitment to the actualization and implementation of the Lamu Port South Sudan Ethiopia Transport Corridor Project, also known as LAPSET, an engagement in joint military training exercise beyond the strategic level. The field marshal also visited the National Defense College, Kenya, where he was received by the Commandant Major General Rashid Elmi. He also visited Uhuru Gardens National Monument and Museum, where he was taken on a museum tour to delve into Kenya's history. Honorable Aidan Duale, the Cabinet Secretary for Defense, earlier this week unveiled a new two-story dormitory at Moy Forces Academy in Nairobi with an aim to alleviate overcrowding and accommodate the increasing student population. This is also in support of the national government's directive on a 100% transition from primary to secondary level of education. Honorable Duale, who is an alumni of Moy Forces Academy, expressed pleasure on return to his alma mater and reaffirmed the ministry's commitment to restoring the institution to its former glory. The cabinet secretary also urged the students to dedicate themselves to their studies and work diligently to enhance their performance. 
During the visit, the Cabinet Secretary noted that, in partnership with the Ministry of Education and the Teacher Service Commission, the Ministry of Defence will advocate for funding of infrastructural development and the allocation of additional teachers. Furthermore, the Cabinet Secretary warns students that the Ministry of Defence has a zero-tolerance policy towards drug trafficking and other contrabands in all KDF-sponsored schools. His sentiments were echoed by the Vice Chief of Defence Forces, Lieutenant General John Amwangi, and the Kenya Air Force Commander, Major General John Omenda, who both maintained that discipline is key in promoting great performance in any setup. Earlier this week, Brigadier Roba Wario, the Commandant Counter-Insurgency Terrorism and Stability Operations Training Center in Nanyuke, Lekipia County, received the Right Honorable James Hippie, United Kingdom Minister of State for Armed Forces, who visited the school. The minister had the privilege of witnessing an impressive demonstration of urban operations conducted as part of the Joint Multinational Field Training Exercise, codenamed Justified Accord 2024. The exercise showcased the collaborative efforts of multiple nations in preparing for complex security scenarios. During the visit, the commandant emphasized on counterinsurgency, terrorism and stability operations training center objectives to sharpen skills, enhance capacity and improve performance in the ever-evolving and intricate security landscape. The commandant added that the center emphasizes national synergy through integration, synchronization and coordination of military operations with activities of multi-agency partners. Honorable Aidan Dwale, the Cabinet Secretary for Defense, hosted the country director for the United Nations World Food Program, Ms. Lauren Landy, who paid him a courtesy call at the defense headquarters here in Nairobi. Ms. Lauren commended the Ministry of Defense for its efforts in emergency and disaster response, noting the pivotal role it played during the 2023 El Nino rains in distributing food and other supplies to the affected regions. During the meeting, the Cabinet Secretary reiterated that the Ministry of Defense has a steadfast commitment to its constitutional duty of supporting and collaborating with civil authorities during emergencies and disasters to provide essential humanitarian aid. The two leaders explored avenues for potential training and capacity building initiative for the benefit of the communities and discussed efforts toward bolstering food security. Mr. Patrick Mariru, the Principal Secretary for Defense, hosted the Israel Ambassador to Kenya, His Excellency Mr. Michael Lotem, who paid him a courtesy call at the Defense Headquarters in Nairobi. The two leaders discussed a wide range of geostrategic issues of mutual concern to the two countries, including shipbuilding, blue economy, counterterrorism, joint military training and exercises by the Kenya Defense Forces and the Israel Defense Forces, among others. The two leaders explored areas of possible future partnerships and collaborations for for the mutual benefit of the citizens of the two countries. Moving on, Brigadier Yaya Abdi, Deputy Commander Kenya Navy, flagged off Kenya Navy ships Jasiri and Shuja on exercise Jitegeme 25 training crews for comprehensive sea practical training for junior officers under training at the Kenya Navy fleet Mkunguni Jetty. The training crews exercise the culmination of the theoretical classwork of junior officers under training at Kenya Navy Training College after they graduated from the Kenya Military Academy. The extensive sea and import training is geared towards self-reliance to enable the junior officers to prepare for taking up the mantle of command and leadership in future naval tasks. Exercise Justified Accord, a joint multinational field training exercise, commenced early this week at the Counterinsurgency Terrorism and Stability Operations Center in Nanyuki, Laikipia County. The two-week exercise has brought together service personnel from Djibouti, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Somalia, United Kingdom, and the United States. The joint multinational field training exercise, hosted by the Kenya Defense Forces, aims at fostering multinational interoperability, enhancing readiness, and preparing regional partners for external missions. The exercise kicked off with participants being taken through close quarter battle tactics, focusing on enemy clearance in both rural and urban environments. The skills gained allow soldiers to secure rooms with precision, minimizing harm to friendly forces, non-combatants and property. Additionally, a session on countering improvised explosive devices focused on equipping the participants with essential skills in operating mine detectors and enhancing their tactical situational awareness. Participants learned how to recognize and locate improvised explosive devices planted on roads. 
By mastering these skills, participants contribute to safer operations and effective responses in challenging environments. Day 4 of the exercise witnessed special training in coordinating air support. The joint forces further polished their skills in locating, rescuing and recovering personnel in distress, an exercise critical for retrieving downed pilots, injured soldiers or civilians caught in conflict zones. Still on joint military exercises, the Combined Joint Air Firepower Integration Course, facilitated by the U.S. Joint Special Operation University, came to an end with Lieutenant Colonel Henry Mwenemeru officiating the closing ceremony at Moi Air Base here in Nairobi. Speaking during the ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Mwenemeru reiterated the importance of seamless joint operations for achieving military objectives. He further stated that the warfare has drastically changed from individual unit approach to joint operations. Mr. Blorin Brexa from the Kenya-US liaison office commended the valuable partnership between the two countries in enhancing security. The course aimed to improve joint operations and effective use of air power. In a bid to foster good working relations, Kenya Defense Forces troops deployed at Gerile Forward Operation Base in Wajia County undertook various civil military cooperation activities at the center and in Handaki East. The troops offered free medical services and donated assorted foodstuff in addition to supplying fresh water to the residents in the locality. The KDF team engaged with key leaders from the area led by Chief Mr. Mohamed Chidie, the Chair of Council of Elders Abdi Yusuf and the in-charge of National Police Reservist Mr. Abdi Hassan. While representing the community, Mr. Abdi Yusuf commended KDF for the positive gesture in reaching out and supporting the local community. He further noted that the initiative will spur the already existing good relations. Kenya Defense Forces troops stationed at Chasitet Military Camp in Baringo County as part of the Operation Maliza Uhalifu collaborated with Medical Missions Africa to hold a one-day free medical camp at Adokate Adome. This collaborative effort aimed to address the healthcare needs of the local community and strengthen the relationship between military and the locals. The medical team successfully treated more than 200 patients, the majority of whom were women and children. Beyond the medical services provided, the medical camp also served as an opportunity for the service personnel to engage with the residents. The medical camp is among the civilian military activities conducted by the multi-agency operation team in the North Rift in a bid to foster good relations between the security officers and the residents in the region. During the medical camp, residents benefited from a range of services including general medical checkups, screening for uncommunicable diseases and outpatient treatment. Additionally, educational sessions were conducted to raise awareness about hygiene and sanitation practices, proper nutrition, the importance of natural care, clinic visits, and bath preparedness. Area residents expressed gratitude to Kenya Defense Force and Medical Missions Africa for their concerted efforts in providing humanitarian support and maintaining peace. Thank you for watching. We look forward to your feedback via our official social media handles and your viewership next Friday for the KDF Friday Bulletin. I am Sajet Lorin, Tegubo. Goodbye and God bless.